if, oh, you guys saw that? If you're looking to do a full white build with one of AMD's new 7000 series chips, you're gonna find your motherboard choices rather limited. Admittedly, what your motherboard or any component looks like is probably the least important spec. But with build prices skyrocketing, you can't really blame someone if they go for not just performance, but the actual aesthetics of their build to make something a showpiece in their office or their media room. That brings us to today's review of ASUS's B650E-A Rogue Strix Gaming Wi-Fi Motherboard. If you're going for a full white build, this is one of the few choices that you actually have. But does it offer the performance to actually be the centerpiece of whatever your new rig is gonna be? As always, let's take a second to look at this board up close while we jump into some of the marketing materials provided by ASUS before we dive into our thoughts on whether or not this is the right board for you. The Rogue Strix B650-A Gaming Wi-Fi comes equipped with potent performance and thermal prowess in a fresh looking package. And by fresh, they mean virtually identical to every Dash A board they've released for the past three years. Robust delivery is cooled with thick heat sinks against a black PCB. The board features 12 and 2 teamed power solution rated at 60 amps per stage. It supports four dim dual channel DDR5 up to 6400, two PCIe 4x16, and two PCIe 4x1 expansion slots, as well as three M.2 storage slots, two Gen 4 and one Gen 5. For cooling, we have substantial heat sinks over the VRM as well as all three M.2 slots. For connectivity, the board offers a full complement of internal headers for your front I.O., cooling, and RGB solutions. The rear I.O. comes packed with both HDMI and display port out, two USB Type-C, three USB 3 Type-A, and four USB 2.0 ports, as well as Wi-Fi 6E, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and a full complement of audio jacks. The first thing I wanna to touch on is the board's power delivery. With eight plus four power connectors and 12 and two power phases rated at 60 amps, the first question you might have is, can this board actually power my new build? And to be fair, that's a legitimate question. With a lot of the B650 boards out there offering 14 power stages or more, and even things way more excessive than the X670 boards like 20 and 2, you might be wondering, can this thing actually handle AMD's 7000 series power hungry chips? Well, that's something that I've touched on in previous reviews where power phases are an area where manufacturers tend to overbuild. It's an easy way to price up a board without actually impacting the manufacturer's overall bomb costs. So I'm happy to say with 12 power phases rated at 60 amps, this board is gonna offer more than enough power to handle even the beefiest of AMD's 7000 series chips. Now, if you are a hardcore overclocker and you're rolling with something like the 7900 or 7950X, this might not be the board for you. However, let's be honest, if that is you, you're probably not looking at a B-series board to begin with. You're more than likely gonna go with one of the higher tier X670E options. The board offers more than enough power to handle a 7950X as well as fairly substantial heat sinks over the VRM to help with cooling. And to be clear, if you are running a 7950X and you're not one of those hardcore overclockers, you're probably better off dropping that chip into eco mode or running a lower power custom tuning like one of these here to get the best results and stay on your efficiency curve. 
Looking at PCIe compatibility, we have two PCIe 4.0 slots, one of which takes advantage of ASUS's quick release feature to help you with installing new GPUs or reseeding yours. Again, that's not a necessary feature, but it is a great quality of life addition to have. The board also has two 1X slots for those of us that might be still taking advantage of those. I know we don't see them used as often as we did in the past, but it is nice to have. One key note here is the second PCIe 4 slot does share bandwidth with the third M.2 slot on this board. So that is definitely something to keep in mind if you're one of the few people that is gonna utilize all three M.2 slots as well as both your PCIe 4 expansion slots. Now, I know that doesn't apply to most of us, but for the few people that do, it is a key thing that you wanna keep in mind whenever you're looking at a motherboard. On the topic of M.2 storage, we have three M.2 slots with the main slot being rated at PCIe 5.0 with a fairly substantial heatsink, and the other two slots at 4.0. This combined with the main GPU PCIe expansion slot rated at 4.0 is one of those things that at first might seem like a drawback, but it's actually a non-factor. With even the beefiest GPUs like the 4090 only taking advantage of PCIe 4, combined with the fact that while Gen 5 M.2 storage is starting to become a thing, it is still insanely expensive and doesn't really offer any real world benefits that you're gonna notice on day-to-day -day usage. Again, it's another one of those areas where you may see some other boards that will hail this as future-proofing, but really it's just an inexpensive way for the manufacturer to drive up the price of the motherboard at retail. The board does offer 4DIMM DDR5 support as all AMD 7000 series motherboards have to, rated at 6400 MTS. With the sweet spot for AMD 7000 series chips being right at 6000, again, this is something that more than meets your needs for daily usage. Moving into the rear IO, we do see a full complement of audio jacks coupled with the ALC 4080 codec. We also have a display port out as well as HDMI out, two type C's, a complement of USB type A's, more than enough to handle any peripheral you want, as well as BIOS flashback. One thing notably missing when comparing this board to its X670E bigger brother is a clear CMOS button. Again, for most of us, that's not gonna really come into play, but for you more adventurous types that might get into a little trouble in the BIOS sometimes, that's something missing that's worth keeping in mind. I am still wondering when, if ever, manufacturers are gonna give us more Type-C ports on the back. With more and more peripherals switching over to Type-C, it's only a matter of time before the standard one or two Type-C ports on the rear I.O. just doesn't cut it anymore. Internally, there are more than enough headers to cover whatever type of RGB, cooling, or internal storage design you ultimately decide to go with, so there's no worries there. Finally, on the topic of build quality, the board offers a six-layer PCB. While definitely more than adequate, a lot of the other options in this price range are offering at least an eight-layer PCB. It does come equipped with substantial heat sinks over the VRM, as well as all three M.2 slots to make sure your cooling is adequate to exceptional. Um, the overall design and aesthetic of the board is very nice and more than adequate to fit any all white or Oreo cookie style build you might be going with. Ultimately, what I recommend this motherboard. Well, if you're looking to do an all white build, Admittedly, your choices are pretty limited with what you go with. But I can't help but feel like for this board, ASUS is making you pay up a little for the color and the style versus the actual specs that the board gives you. I do think if you're gonna go with a white aesthetic, you get a little more value going with something like the X670E 
bigger brother version of this board versus this one itself. However, if you're on a budget and you're dead set on going with an all white build, this wouldn't be a bad option, though it may not ultimately offer the best value for your money. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content, and as always, thanks for watching.